let's go to verse 9. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians 2 um, and 9. When you get there, let me hear you say amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And the scripture reads as follows. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man uh, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things, amen, of God. And we've been talking about um, understanding uh, the love of God, right? Amen. Understanding the love of God. And, uh, and the spirit of God revealed some profound things to us, amen, uh, on last week about, you know, what love is and what love is not. Amen. And uh, uh, we found out that, that love is not a thing. It's, it's not a car. It's not a house. It's not a thing, right? The Bible says, love uh, not the world, neither the things that are in the world, right? So love is not a thing, amen? Uh, uh, things are only an expression, expressions of God's love. You got it? When God gives us things, the, the things are an expression of his love. Y'all with me? The thing, is, the thing is not a love. You got it? That's why you shouldn't fall in love with the thing. Y'all got it? Uh, we found out that love uh, is not natural. It's supernatural. How many of y'all remember that? We found out that love is a spirit. Everybody said love is a spirit. Amen. It's, it's spiritual. It's not natural. It's not, it's not fleshly. You got it? And, and there are people we found out that uh, trying to uh, know love and, and experience love by the flesh. Y'all got it? And that's not the way we're supposed to be administering love. Not the love of God. The love of the world is a fleshly love. Y'all got it? And, and the problem with that is that the flesh can never be fulfilled in this state. How many of y'all understand that? It can never be fulfilled, you know. And so what we have to do in order to love like God, we have to learn how to love uh, in the spirit and by the spirit and, and through the spirit. Y'all got it? We found out that sex was not love. It's an expression of the love that a husband and a wife is supposed to have for one another. But it is not love. Man, that's so vital and important. Because a lot of people have equated sex with or as it is love. Y'all got it? And, and that's just not true. And I told you, a person can have sex with you and never love you. And, and I told you, in a general context, Men are most, some men, outside of the body of Christ, because we're supposed to be a different type of species. But outside of the body of Christ, men in the world are efficient in that, that they can have sex without love. Women are not that good at that. Thank God. Y'all got it. And, uh, and, and most of the time when, when that transpires, it comes from a woman's heart. It comes from her, from her spirit, if you will. You got, that's why she, you know, totally tore up when somebody violate that. You got it? Because she thought that her expression of love was what the joker really wanted, and that really wasn't what he wanted. He, what he really wanted was just sex. Can I be real? I mean, I'm playing on being real, you know. I don't, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Y'all got it, and, and so we have to learn how to love spiritually and then let those natural things be an expression of our love, but don't, don't ever define sex as love. Money is not love. Money can be used as a tool to express love, but money is not love. Y'all, yeah, I, I, I understand it. I'm answering it. 
I mean, I mean it's a tool, right? But it's an, ex it's an expression of love. It's not love. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, money, money. Is, not is not love. But it can be used, can be used as, a as a tool to express love. Because sometimes you have to love folks who don't have money. Amen. Or as much money as you wish they had. Amen. But if your relationship is based on the money. Y'all got it. Amen. And so uh, uh, that's why the Bible said that the love of God is shed abroad. In our hearts, or by our hearts, or through our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, who is a spirit, right? And so, 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 love is a spirit, and we have to learn how to love spiritually first. And this is an amazing thing, man. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that. You know that. I, listen, I used to didn't know it. You got, but thank God the eyes of my understanding are, are, are enlightened. Y'all, y'all got it. Y'all all right with that? Yeah. And, and according to my mate, she liked this guy. You know, he, she, hey, hey, yeah. I like this new man. Wait, woo! Yeah, but, but, but yeah, 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 because, <laughs> you know, when, when the light comes, we, we're supposed to walk in it. Yeah, 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 right, right, amen. You know, and, and the love of God is unconditional, <laughs> right? Amen. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, last week we, we talked about that there uh, uh the love of God is diverse in its nature. You remember that? It's diverse in its nature. And we talked about there's a certain type of love that we're supposed to have only for God. There's a certain type of love that, we, that the husband is supposed to have uh, uh, for his wife, a certain type of love. There's a certain type of love that a wife is supposed to have for her children, right? A certain type of love that a, a wife is supposed to have for her husband as, as well. And a certain type of love that children are supposed to have for their parents, certain type of love that we're supposed to have for the brethren or for the household of faith, certain type of love that we're supposed to even have uh, for our neighbors, and then there's a certain type of love that we're supposed to have for our enemies. Right. And all of those dimensions of the love of God is, is different in its expression. Y'all right. got it's different in its, expression, in its expression, and if we don't, you know, systematically study it and find out, you know, what, what actually, how it's supposed to be manifested, we won't know how to do it. We'll know we're supposed to do it. How many people know you're supposed to do it? Right. But knowing how to do it is a whole nother story. See, so people can be in love and not know how to love. You got, and, 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 and that's, a, man, a serious dichotomy because, you know, I found that out over the years. People, they do, they really love one another, but they just didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to do it, and, and they, were, they were running off the folk that they loved. Y'all got it? See, love is only defined by God's definition. Right? How I love my wife is not defined by my definition or, the, or man's definition. It's only defined by God's definition. You got it? And if I don't learn how to do that, I don't care what I try to do in my own strength or in my own flesh, she's not going to ever feel love. Y'all got it? Loving your husband is not defined by your definition. It's defined by God's definition. So that means you have to, you have to go in that word and find out what the word said, not how you feel. Because if either one of you, husband or wife, Start trying to love one another based on how you feel. You're gonna, you're not gonna ever do it because your feeling changes Amen. with circumstances. And when, it, like some, when the money get funny, what you say? Yeah. 
when a husband is not willing to sacrifice for his wife, love her like Christ loved the church. When a wife is not willing to reverence her husband, if you don't reverence him, he will never feel love. Right? If you're not willing to sacrifice for her, she will never feel love. Am I, am I making sense? Yes. I ain't going to get into it today, but man, I, I found out some few weeks ago about how, about as I was studying that, the issue about how a woman's supposed to love her husband, and I found out something that, do you know that, that one of the ways that a man defines love, y'all all right, my daughters, y'all all right, tell me y'all all right, okay. One of the ways that a man defines love is by the obedience of his wife. I I told y'all you had to let God. Yeah, you let yeah, yeah, you let God define it now. And don't worry, men ain't gonna get away. We gonna de- we gonna deal with that. Yeah, right, right. But but the one of the ways that a man define and most men will never say it. But one of the ways that they define love is by the obedience of their wife. You want some Bible? Jesus said, "How can you say you love me? Uh, uh-uh, and you won't obey me?" And when you read over there, uh, it may be in Ephesians 5 or somewhere over there where it talks about the relationship that a a man and a woman is supposed to have, a husband and a wife is supposed to have, how that man is supposed to love that woman like Christ loved the church who gave himself, right? How he's supposed to sanctify that woman and wash her with with, with the water of the word and provide and be willing to give his very life for her if it need be. Work two, three, four, five jobs if necessary. Y'all, y'all, y'all got, it. if you keep on reading, the Bible talked about how the woman's supposed to reverence her husband and to be obedient to her own husband. Yeah. Obey her own yeah. husband. You got it? And so what, what happens is we who are born again, our spirits automatically look for those characteristics. And, and it, your spirit defines that as love. When you sacrifice for that woman, your, her spirit defines that as love. She interprets that. Am I helping anybody? She interprets that as love. When you're willing to do whatever it takes to, to, to make her happy. Let, let me rephrase that. When you're willing to do whatever you are capable of doing. You got it. Because you don't want to push him out beyond his measure. Because you'll break him or make him break himself if you do that. That don't mean his measure can't increase. And shouldn't increase. It should increase. Y'all got it. Oh, God. See, the only way his measure can increase is when he increases his measure for God. Because he can ever get to the point where he'll put God first in his life, where he will love God above anything else. The Bible says he's going to seek ye first the kingdom of God, which means to seek the king first, right, and his righteousness, and then all of these things. See, so the more I love God, the more I have to love my wife. The more capacity I develop to love my wife, and the more things God gives me to express my love for my wife. But I can't get those things until I first love God. I can never uh, give her what I want to give her if my relationship with God ain't right. And somehow or another, the enemy done trick folks into thinking that if they, if they keep God out there like that on that level, they will never be able to do what they want to do for their mates. And so what they do is they put either their wife before God or their husband before God, and then nobody's fulfilled. Nobody's fulfilled. Because you can't do it outside of God. Am I making sense? So there are different dimensions, right? Different diverse dimensions of, of the love of God. And we had to find out what the Word say about it. Now listen. I understand that you may have either have a man 
or have had an experience with a man who have not been as kosher as he should be. I'm, I'm, right? Y'all all right? But you picked him. <laughs> right? And I would imagine if I interviewed him, <laughs> he would take this same position, right, that, that, that she could do a little bit better. Right? She could do a little bit better. And so when I talk about her being obedient, I'm not saying that he's been perfect from his fleshless side. You know, and, and even have expressed the love uh, like Christ loved the church perfectly, you follow me. But everybody got to start with their own part. Amen. See, what we do is we fall for this. If you will, then I will. Yeah. That ain't going to never work. Amen. Because that's not the way God designed it to work. You got the deal is this. If I will, she will. Yeah, but I got to do it first. I can't wait for her to get it right. And I'm not saying she got it wrong. I'm just, I'm just, but that's the game that the enemy have us playing. Right? You waiting on him. Well, you know, you know, you go and you study his part like you shouldn't be doing. He go study your part. Like he shouldn't be doing. Right. Right, right. He should be studying his part. Right. My focus ought to be not about what Sister Kyle's is doing. It's about what I'm supposed to be doing. You got it. And if I do what I'm supposed to do, it'll change what Sister Kyle's is doing. And I'm not saying she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. I'm just trying to show you an analogy, how, how it works in the kingdom of God. Right. Y'all got it. And, and men and women play them games. And, and, and it be years before, sometime before anybody feels good about their relationship. Because everybody waiting on everybody else to get it, get, the, get it right first. And, and, and them kind of games, you know, make it way into the bedroom. Everybody say move on. That, that right there ain't going to never work. That ain't, that, that ain't going to help not one relationship when, when y'all cut one another off. That ain't going to help. That, that's going to make it worse. Because the Bible said what you do, you put one another in, in a position where, where they can be tempted now. You got and so you have to ask yourself before you go down that path, is that really what I want to do? All because you just don't feel like it. You got a headache. Oh! No, you ain't got no headache. You got a heartache. Somebody said doing what's right. Is always a choice. It's not a feeling. When you get to the place where the only reason way you'll do what's right is if you feel like it, you ain't going to never do what's right. If you do a little something that's right, then you're going to sabotage it down the road because when you do a little something, your feeling don't change and you just stop doing it, right? See, that ain't going to never work. That ain't, ain't going to never produce the result that you want. Especially in the confines of, 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 of a godly or established relationship. Y'all got to, I've got to do my part regardless. And I'm not even trying to imply at all that I don't want to. So don't even throw that in there that he's saying reluctantly. I'm not. Y'all, I want to. When, when, when my wife starts telling me about her appreciation. For my personal growth, y'all got it. What, Jerry? I got you. You, can, you keep going. Uh, about my personal growth, 
you, you know what I told her? You know, I, I, I said, all right, now you got to do your part. No, I, I said, listen, it has always been in my heart to be this person toward you. you y'all got, it, it has always been in my heart. Now, did I always know how to perfectly do it? No. But it has always been in my heart to do it because I love her. You can't do better until you know better. And you can't let your pride get in the way, Amen. keeping you from doing better. Amen. Right? You, you know, well, I want nobody to know I didn't know what I was doing. Well, they know anyhow. They, they, already, they already know. They already know. And, 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 I, and I'll give you this. Everybody is different in this respect. They, they're in different places where their understanding is concerned. You, you follow me? So maybe where, just as a, a pure analogy now, maybe where Sister Kaza and I are, this couple may not be there. Amen. And they may be there, Amen. right? Elder Burrell may not be where I am. I might not be where Elder Burrell is, and, and vice But everybody can get there. Amen. You got it? So having said that, I don't have to keep looking at Elder Burrell. I have to keep looking in this book. Yeah, y'all got. She want to look at Sister Burrell. She just keep looking in this book because we may be in two different places at any point. Uh, in, you know, in our in our in our walk together. You got. So you can't go around. You know, talking about where well, well, you ought to be like Derek. You don't know Derek. Blink, blink. <laughs> no, I'm there. <just, laughs> yeah, but but, but y'all understand the, yeah. the spiritual logic I'm trying to get across to you. you. That ain't how you do it. You you go looking at somebody else and then you, you know, you, you make an assessment about the relationship you're in. And that's and that's really not the focus you're supposed to have. Are they supposed to be a good example? Yes. Yeah. But but that ain't the you don't know internally where they actually are. All you see is their public presentation. You know who knows exactly where I am? God and... Right. You know who knows exactly what this is? God and me. See. So, but praise the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 24. I really wasn't intending to go all there. But, but, but y'all all right? Y'all all right? See, this kind of stuff... I'm going to tell you what this is doing. This... Oh, God. Now, this stuff is tight, but the Bible says over in, I think it's in Acts 4 and 12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpening into his sword, pitching even the dividing the son of soul and spirit. It's a, right, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart, and, and all things are naked and open to the eyes of him uh, with whom we have to do, right? And so what this word is doing is... <laughs> It's stripping all of us naked. Thank you, Lord. You got it. And I know some of this stuff is uncomfortable for, for some people because you think I see your nakedness. I'm not talking about your naked flesh. I'm talking about your, the condition of your naked spirit, your naked soul, the stuff that's in there that ain't supposed to in, be in there. The word, the spirit of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, yes, I see that and I love you anyhow. And, and what I want you to do is take this word and get rid of those things that I just. So, so don't come in here hiding because you can't hide. Right. I'm not trying to hide myself. I'm way quicker to repent about things he revealed to me about me now than I was two weeks ago. Amen. Because I don't want that stuff to be there. Y'all getting it? Y'all? See, so, and, and this kind of, this, this next level teaching, y'all. And what it's going to do it's going to free you up to love purely and sincerely. 
and, and not, you know, based on a root of manipulation. You'll be surprised how many relationships, the foundation of it is pure manipulation. You know, the real love really can't come through because you, 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 when I say you, I'm talking about in general, male and female, because we're too busy trying to angle and, and, and make sure I, I'm in a position to have the upper hand about this and about that. And all. that ain't love, man. I tell you, that's akin to witchcraft. Love does not mean I control Sister Kaz or manipulate Sister Kaz. You got, you know, uh, the love that will come purely from her heart <laughs> is better to me than any type of a love I get from her based on manipulating her. Amen. Because she didn't freely give it. I, I told you, you I, I would be have elicited something that was not a free will offering. And, and sometimes if it ain't a free will offering, it's illegal for you to have it. Because you didn't get it by just means. And that kind of stuff never satisfies. Hallelujah. Did I call a scripture? Y'all still love me? All right, I see you now. Y'all still love me. I still love y'all. I, I love y'all. I'm loving you with the love of the Lord. From a pure, from a pure heart, right? And we all naked and open to the eyes of him. That's why when I'm studying this stuff, sometimes I had to get up. Lord, him, mercy, help me, Jesus. It's going to pull my, pull my cover off me like that. God, though. You know, that's my approach to ministry. Ministry ain't about me. I, I pray God give me grace to minister to the people from a pure heart. Amen. You find it with no ulterior motives. And, and, and when you're in that place, man, you'll be amazed at what, what, what will flow through you for the betterment of the people of God. Y'all got it? I keep trying to get to the scripture, Ephesians 6 and 24. It said, grace be uh, with all them that, what? Love the Lord. Jesus Christ in sincerity, right? And, and so, you know, the foundation of love has to be uh, sincerity, right? Got, y'all got it? It must be uh, sincerity, right? You have to love sincerely, amen? And I tell you, true love is not a product of the flesh, but it is a product, amen, of the spirit, amen? And so I told you that we have to learn how to love God, right, first, right? Go to Matthew 22 and 34. Let's see, can we try to move on here? Matthews, y'all all right? 22 and, and 34. Well, y'all got to make, y'all think this time y'all should have been in Baton Rouge, my goodness. <laughs> y'all all right? Matthews 20, uh, 2 and 34, you there? Uh, it is said, but when? Is that where you are? Amen. But when the Pharisees had heard uh, that he put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together, right? All right? Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, Amen. tempting him, right? And saying, Master, so you had to be careful when folks trying to stroke your ego, Master, which is the great commandment in the law, right? Now, the first thing that I, I want to point out about this scripture is the fact that uh, loving God with all of your heart is something that we have to do, have to be taught how to do, right? Did y'all hear that? It's something that we have to be taught how to do, right? I can tell you to do it, but then if I don't teach you how to do it, you still can't do it. In love, not know how to love, right? It's a lot of people love God, but don't know how to love God, right? Yeah, can y'all can y'all receive that? So, the reason being is because uh, love is not a natural inclination of the flesh. Loving God is not a natural inclination of the flesh to do it. 
Y'all got it? Loving God is not a natural inclination, amen, of the flesh. Flesh wants to love self above, el- above all else, even God. Not my flesh, Pastor. Yes, it does. All you got to do is just, just give it a little freedom, and it'll prove to you. <laughs> right? It, it'll prove to you. See, flesh, now listen, I'm talking about flesh. I'm not talking about you who are spirit. Y'all got it? Flesh is always about itself. Even in a relationship, if people are loving one another by the flesh, it's always about me. It ain't never about her. And love is always, in a relationship, always about the other person. Right? So, but but if, if, if love is based on the flesh, it's going to always be about how I feel, what I want, what I didn't get, what you didn't do for me. Am I? T- what you didn't do for me. Whenever you start feeling those things, you have to learn how to challenge that. Yeah, I'm talking about in a relationship, right? And both individuals have to do that, amen. But flesh is always all about self. I'm not supposed to be concerned about myself, Pastor. I didn't say that, but I'm telling you, you had to get it done the right way. You had to get that fulfillment the right way. Right? What silver man soweth, that's what he's going to reap. Not what silver man wants. God, dog. Right? Not what silver woman wants. That's what she's going to reap. No. What silver she sow, what silver he sow. That's what he's going he gonna to get. Am I helping anybody? All right? Uh, right. So, so flesh, flesh wants to love self above all else, you know, even God. And, and, and we know that's true because the Bible says, somebody said the Bible says, amen, that there are some people who are lovers of self and other things more than they are of God. Since you don't believe me, turn to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Yeah, that, that ain't nothing to me. Okay. I say flesh loves self more than anything or anybody else. Y'all with me? 1 Timothy 3 and 1. This is a true saying. That's what it said. Yeah. Everybody said this is a true saying. I think I want. Did I say first? Timothy? Give me second Timothy. I want. I want yeah, I want, I'm thanking. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I want second Timothy. Second Timothy. I got second Timothy on the book. I don't know why I told y'all first. Did I? Well, what are y'all doing over there for it? Thank you, ma'am. This know also, that's what? Amen. Right. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be what? Shall be what? Lovers of their own. Said because flesh loves self. Right. More than anybody else. Right. And, and, and See, we say things, but you really have to, you know, qualify a thing in your heart, you know, in your understanding. You know, I love me some me. Well, you, you have to be careful now. Because if you, if you, if you, if, if that's, you know, the premise that you, you, you the standard that you're going to have, you know, you're going to put yourself above everybody else. And then be expecting to be loved from everybody else like you love yourself. But you ain't loving nobody but yourself. Right? And so I'm, I'm not saying you're not supposed to care for yourself and be concerned about yourself and, and want, you know, things to be well with you, you, yourself as an individual. But, but you, have to, you have to be, you, you have to be careful with that, with that right? Say, so, uh, Parents times come, men should be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh, 
All of that is a result of them loving themselves. They're unholy, they're disobedient to their parents, they're, they're proud, right? Uh, blasphemous, uh, uh, unholy, without natural affection. God, dog, y'all are truth breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, headed, high minded, all because they love themselves. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of what? Now, now, people of God, we really, really need to get balance right there, you know, about the, 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 the love, loving of pleasure more than the loving of God. You got it? Because God wants us to have pleasure. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But he don't want it to become the object of our love. You got it? To the point to where you would rather, you would rather uh, be in some pleasurable activity than being in the presence of God. Y'all got, this may be sounding self-serving, but that's why it's so easy for some folks not to come to church. Especially if it's on a holiday. They don't look at it like this, you, you follow me? but they would rather be in a pleasurable, don't, don't misread me. I'm not saying if you miss a service, it's, you know, you're going to H-E-W Hockey State. That's not what I'm, that's not, that's, if you go on vacation and you go out of town or something, that's not what I'm, what I'm saying. But you really had to, you had to keep a watch over that to make sure that in your heart, you would not, you would rather be in a pleasurable situation than you would be in the presence of God. There, there ain't no contest. Being in the presence of God will always be better than being in any pleasurable uh, condition. You got it? So we had to put that in, 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 in proper priority, in proper balance, right? Amen. Go on vacation, you know, go out to dinner. Have, you, have fun with your mate and your, and, your, and your family and all that kind of stuff, right? But don't, don't, don't train them that it's more important to do that than to be with God. And we can subtly, uh, unconsciously, not intending to do that. We can make them think that everything else is more important than God. I don't leave God when I go on vacation. I don't stop praying for y'all when, when me and Sister Kyle are relaxing, when we on the beach taking a picture of our feet. <laughs> Talking about this is the day that the Lord has made and and we rejoicing and we glad in it. Yeah, I don't, I don't forget about God or y'all when Sister Kyle's are making them non-alcoholic right. peanut coladas. Yeah. Right. And we drink the whole pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole pitcher. Yeah, that's an expression of love. But I don't forget about God when I'm there. I, I don't not pray. I, I take my Bible. Yeah, y'all, I, I take my study material. I take my, my laptop. Yeah. Yeah, y'all got it. And, 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 and sometimes we fight over who get the table. Amen. Where we going to study at? Right? We, we take religious reading material. Right. You know, when we sitting out there on the balcony, right. drinking a cup of joe. In the breeze, summer breeze, make me feel fine. Blowing through the jasmine of my mind. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, come on back, yeah, yeah, yeah. All what I'm saying is go on vacation, but don't forget about God. Right, right. So, so, so they traded high minded levels of pleasure more than levels of God, having a form of godliness, right? But denying the power thereof from such turn away. Turn away. I don't even know what I want to read, verse 6 for of this sort are they which creep into houses. 
<laughs> and lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with divers lust that they think is love. And the only thing that joker love is himself. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all, y'all got it? Okay, so let me see where I am. Okay. So this lawyer came to Jesus, right? Yeah. Master, which is his greatest commandment, right? Yeah. Right? And I tell you, uh, 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 he was being deceitful, right? Tempting him, right? And so what you do, you, you have here a lawyer displaying his deceit. He thought uh, he knew a, more about the law than the lawgiver. Right. Right. Like some folks, I know how to love. He thought he knew a more, more about the law than the lawgiver. He was not even aware of the fact that he was talking to the only one who could fulfill the law. That's why I said you can't do this in your own strength. You had to do it in God's strength and in God's power and by his spirit, right? And Jesus answered him saying in verse 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart and with all of thy soul and with all of thy mind. In other words, there is a devotion to God that we should have that supersedes all other devotions. Amen. You got it? And, and that's, that's uncommon to the flesh. I mean, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable is what I want to say uh, to the flesh to, to have a devotion to God that supersedes all others because some kind of way he'll translate that, that into you, you can't love your, your mate or somebody else. And that's not true. It's just a different dim, uh, uh, dimension of the love of God that you're supposed to have for your mate. Right? So the love that Sister Kyle has for me is not supposed to be on the same plane as her love for God. And I should not require that of her. You got, and she should not require that of me because that's not going to be beneficial to her if she turned me into an idol. Amen. Or if you, or if I, you know, turn her into an idol, that, that's not going to be beneficial to her. That's going to hurt both of us. That's going to, that's going to cripple our relationship. Y'all, y'all, y'all got it? So there's a certain uh, level of devotion that's only that we're only supposed to, um, to give to God, right? Go to Deuteronomy 6 and 4, you know, as, as we look at the Old Testament paradigm on this same scripture. See, Jesus knew the law. Yeah. Amen. It, it was his spirit that inspired, you know, the law givers to write the law. But you know how some folk think they're smarter than God about everything. I know how to love people. I know how I'm supposed to be loved. No, you know how you want to be loved. Until you get the word in your own, you don't know how to love. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, with all of thy soul, and with all uh, thy might, right? So, so that's a level of love that only God's supposed to have, right? There's no room enough for nobody else on that level. And trust me, everybody else below that going to be all right. Amen. If you love God like this, don't worry about it. Sister God going to be happy. <laughs> Bro, man going to be happy. Right? Y'all with that? Amen. Love God right, man. You can go to the car lot because you got a letter. <laughs> and because, you know... See, they really didn't go to the car lot because of the letter. They went to the car lot because Brother Marty Marty wanted to express his love. You know, I was out at the mall the other day putting some batteries, get some batteries put in my watch, and I seen this big dude come around the corner with short pants on and his hat turned backwards and, and all his muscles out. And, and I looked up in the face, I said, boy, that's Marty Marty. And y'all know how he walked. <laughs> Da, 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 da. He, 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 no, he be strutting now. He, he listen. Martin don't be playing. You, you know. 
it'd be like, big man coming through, wide load, get back. And, I, and I'm talking about all muscle, you know, wide load. Yeah, 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 it'd be. I said, I said, I said, look at Martin Marr. You know, and he was on the phone, you know, by the time he got up close to me, hey, Pastor, I said, do Keita know you out here spending all this money? She on the phone now, Pastor, you know what I said? <laughs> he definitely was on assignment now, you know. He, he was looking for, yeah, Dad, I'm looking for something. <laughs> See, I'm looking out for you, Keita, you know the eyes of the Lord are in every place. <laughs> he was strutting, but he was by himself. <laughs> so, so we're supposed to love God with all our hearts, right? All of our soul and all of our might, right? See, the sister Mitchell, sister Kyle was right. See, you told me to preach. See, now here we are. We are. Now, now, let's be specific. Mo was just talking about loving the God of the Bible, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. He's talking about the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that God, right? And if you are in Christ, he's, he's your God, he's your Father, and there's none like him. And if there's none like him, he is due an honor, a devotion, and a love that no one else is due. Because he is the greatest, amen, and the greatest thing that we can do as human beings uh, is to express our love for him. That's the greatest thing that you can do. That's what he actually wants, right? With all of our hearts and all of our soul and our minds, right? Go to Exodus 28 and 1, and, and I'm about to close, but we're going to do something when I do. Exodus 28 and 1. Y'all get anything out of this today? We got to get this right, y'all. For the sake of everybody else that's in our lives. Because they'll benefit the most if we get it right. Exodus 28 and 1. Are you there? It says, And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him uh, from among the children of Israel. Right? That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Right? You see what God's first concern is? He, he wants them to minister to him, right? Not about him, to him. And a lot of people don't minister to God. You got it? That they may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Itamar, and Aaron's son. Now, in the book of Revelation, the first chapter, verse 6, it says, And he made us kings and priests unto God. And his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So since we are all who we, we who are all in Christ are have been made kings and priests, what that also means is that we all have a responsibility uh, uh, to minister to the Lord. You got it? And listen, the greatest way that you can learn how to effectively uh, minister to the Lord is through praise and worship. That's the greatest way that you can learn how to minister to the Lord is through personal praise and worship. And what I'm about to do is, uh, and Ed, y'all can get ready for me, uh, give him just a second or two to, to swap over. I'm going to show you how I do it personally. Y'all all right with that? Now, that doesn't mean that my way has to be your way. But what I'm trying to do is give you a foundation to work from. You got it? And then you, and, and you, you develop your own way in your personal time, right? But can I just give you some, a, 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 some, a foundation to work from in ministering to the Lord? You got it? Now, ministering to the Lord is not asking him to do something. Y'all got, it's all about expressing your love for him and talking about who he is, you know, uh, in your life. Y'all, y'all got it? It's, it's not about 
requesting anything, right? And I'm not saying you can't ask God for things. You, you follow me? But I kind of think you'll get more from him after you have learned how to love him than you can just by you can found out, ask whatever you will in his name, and he'll, he'll give it unto you, right? Well, you know, that's almost a little shallow if you have not developed an intimate relationship with him. Right? You, how many of y'all just walk up to a stranger and say, you got $5? Let me, let me, let me, get, let me get 10 You got, you got $15 I can get? Right? You, you're even uncomfortable doing that, right? And, and the stranger is uncomfortable. Anybody ever just ask outright? Just you didn't never, you don't know them. They just walk up to you and ask you for some money or some, you know, just ask you for something that, that was valuable, you know, to, to you. You were uncomfortable, right? Man, I don't know you. Who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, you had to hear from God about bro, man. But y'all getting just to what I'm saying? And I'm just saying, when you get down to your, 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 your request phase, you know, you're going to feel better about it, and God going to feel better about it. You got it because you first express, oh, Lord. Oh, I ain't going to say that. That's too, that's too much. Y'all all right? See, you just can't, you know, demand your wife to do, and you haven't did. I say it like that. Was well, that pretty good? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, you can't. You, you supposed to. Yeah, I supposed to, but I would be more willing if you were more loving. You know, if you weren't demanding. Y'all getting the gist of what I'm trying to say? Y'all getting the gist of what I'm saying? And that worked both ways, right? All right. So, so I want to show you how, to, how I personally minister to the Father and how I minister to the Lord Jesus and how I minister to the Holy Spirit before I get to the request stage. Y'all got it? Y'all all right with that? And you can take this if you want to, and, 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 and you can adopt it, and you can add to it, you know, however you are, you, you, you know, with, with the Lord and your relationship with him, but I believe it's going to help you. You got it? And so uh, if you will, stand to your feet. Now, there are times where, where I read this ministry unto the Lord pervadum, and, and this is so in my spirit now, a lot of times that I don't have to use this. This, it comes up out of my spirit when I go into the presence of God. Y'all got it? And I ministered to him before I asked him to do something. Y'all got it? I tell him I love him. And it ain't based on feeling. And you're going to see, I'm, I tell him... You have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. If you would like an audio or video copy of today's message, please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com. Connect with us daily on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Ustream to catch past shows, words of encouragement, special events, or join us live in the sanctuary. We're located at 760 Ermira Street in Mobile, Alabama. Our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. You be blessed. Thank you.